hello Teresa back again this is number four in our lockdown series of work, working and designing from natural form today we're going to do um, work from tree bark uh, but before we start that I just hope you're all well and you're all coping with this social distancing and the isolation it isn't much fun is it um, but hopefully there's a light at the end of the tunnel and we're getting there very very slowly so good luck everybody but let's change our mindset a little bit and knuckle down to some fun well i hope you're going to find it's fun i've had some lovely feedback from the other three yes it's three um designing from natural form so thank you everyone who's taken the time out to comment they're all so positive and it just spurs me on a little bit because sometimes you do wonder you know am i wasting my time but I don't feel that I am so a big thank you to everyone who's actually watching this now and um, following along so off we go this is our example now once again I'm afraid it's framed because this too like the others um, were in an exhibition and they had to be framed to go onto the wall or onto the stand and that is why I mean I don't like them being framed and I will take this out at some time and do something constructive with it but here it is and this is the tree bark now it, <laughs> not that it makes much difference it's actually intended to be viewed that way but if I do that I'm going to miss some not that you would know really um there so that's how it's supposed to be viewed now it's wool and cotton sewing thread and a stranded thread as well six strands in just a few stitches and that is from the chain stitch family which can be used as slow stitch slow stitch does not have to be running stitch uh, it isn't so much about the stitch it's about the process that goes with the slow stitching so you can incorporate this with right uh, here my cuckoo clock again it's 20 past four and because it's broken it will probably chime 12 times oh there we go just get that out of the way do, 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 do. so yeah the chain stitch family and we have here Ooh, regular chain along here just a chain stitch that everybody seems to know this is a beautiful stitch to do and it grows quickly that is twisted chain stitch as is that one as well just a regular chain stitch again looks very different in wool open chain stitch sometimes called a ladder stitch depending on where you are or who's teaching you few french knots more french knots and i believe that's it so what was that that was was that four stitches one two three french knots yeah i think that was just three stitches and the french knots so i'll be showing you how to do that the background fabric is hessian as you probably all know by now i love working on hessian because you can pull the threads you can needle weave you can do so much with the background but this is all surface stitchery hand stitchery surface stitchery embroidery you can call it what you feel happy with so this is what we're going to end up with okay so i'm going to put that to one side and show you the inspiration now this is the inspiration i took it from the park the same time that i took or was it the ivy i took something the, the trees had just been felled and um, it's quite heartbreaking really if you're into conservation and um, natural form and nature and love trees it is quite <laughs> it's quite sad to see all these trees everywhere but it's not nice at all so anyway i did take this so please don't worry i didn't take my chisel and my hammer down and sort of hammer them off the tree um wouldn't do that 
but this this magnificent piece and it is quite long you can only see a little bit but if i measure it it's actually oh 23 inches long so and it's quite lovely now what we're going to do we're going to study just for a second the texture as design students which you are at this very moment we're going to study the texture bearing in mind one of the principles of design is contrast so we're going to look at this now sometimes you get a really good um a really good view if you like that's a funny word because i'm going to tell you just to squeeze your eyes closed semi close for a little bit by doing that you get really strong areas of dark against the light so that is one contrast contrast immediately areas of dark where the light can't get in because these are quite deep crevices on the bark and raised areas of light where the light obviously is is um touching so that is one design principle the contrast between light and dark another which is quite obvious is the contrast between smooth here areas of smooth against areas of rough if you can see down here you can actually hear the rough there um yeah rough to touch whereas different sound completely then we have areas of we have tiny little areas here against the larger areas here so another contrast small against big or oh, we have thick this lovely thick band here against thin so all the time that you're designing just bear in mind the contrast now it's that contrast that that pro produces the texture and the interest okay now another way of doing this and unfortunately i can't find my wax crayons um as, as a, a teacher and then having children i always had wax crayons in my bag and i used to love taking the children out when i was working part-time my children and we would make um wax crayon crayons pictures from man manhole covers don't think i can call them manhole person covers people covers well, you know what I mean, those big things on the floor. Um, that's my door, isn't it? I'm just going to throw my shoe at it to stop it opening. I think we're waiting for a storm. So anyway, and the easiest way to, as you know, to actually see the texture is an ice wax crayon. And this will pick out the areas immediately oh, look at that that's a lovely bit there wax crayons are so much better but i don't know where they are i've tied it up and you know what it is when you tidy up you don't know where anything is if i'd left everything in a mess i would have known exactly where they were so look at that now has that come out you see here We've got you've got raised areas the raised areas just by the fact that the paper has shaped itself to the to the bark areas of dark and light already and look at this lovely line here there now for those of you who wanted to design and take this a bit further and you wanted shapes i'm just going to move that these are what i was trying out earlier on for those of you who wanted to work with shapes because we're, uh, what I failed to say was we're actually working from one line. This is one line, okay? And we end up with lots of what are called related lines. But that was the one line for this particular example. We will be choosing one line shortly. But those of you who perhaps later on wanted to work with whole shapes, all you would do is just find the shapes here. Look at those, the white shapes, there. And you would carry on, that might be a long shape there. You would just carry on 
and I would think that I'm just adding that myself there and that's how you would do that if you wanted something more substantial say you wanted a plique where you apply one fabric to another um, that is how you could you would do that and that's really that's great fun to do so that would be your fabric your applique applied fabric on the background which is our hessian and then you could do your sewing and your slow stitch and your related lines but just for this task what we're going to do is actually choose one one line and I think the line that well let's have a look one one line um, oh there's so much to choose from I like I'm um, looking at the screen there. Let's have a look. Let's. Oh, there's, there's quite a lot to choose from there. That's quite a nice area. Um. Yeah. That's. Is, is it that one there? Uh, I don't think I'm actually going to be able to do it. Oh. And this would just be reference anyway. Right, so let's put that away. Now this will be the line that I'm going to use. I've just curled it a bit more. And that's all I'm going to do. I'm not going to do any anything else. This is really quick and quite simple to do. So there's the line. Now you've seen this before. This was in one of our other sub uh, topics. But it probably looks different. It's the same sacking, okay? But I have dyed this here with turmeric and I left it soaking for a good four hours and it has soaked up the turmeric, something lovely. This was how it was originally, in its original form. Look, that is how it was originally. So you can see just how well it has soaked up the turmeric. I think that's a lovely colour. I wonder if you can see it's really bright and I'm afraid it doesn't look as if it's that bright. Hmm. Yeah, I suppose it is a little bit. Yeah, it is a little bit. Hopefully it will come out brighter than that later. Now, because of the amount of sewing that we will be doing on this for this one this time I have over sewn the edge and I've done it with a zigzag stitch all the way around the edge just to stop the fraying while we sew because it's going to take a lot of probably tugging while we sew um, you can, if you haven't got a sewing machine don't worry you can do this by hand over sew now on one of the other uh, projects we did and it might be the last one we did some over sewing and all you do is in through the back over into the back out the front and in you really are just over sewing the edge now I'm going to just very very lightly um, I don't even know if we need to do that just use that for reference no, I, I don't think I need to do that. I'm going to use that there. And I'm going to start this in the middle. Now, I want that exact as it is. So just like before, I'm going to pin this in the centre. Now, you might think, well, I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to put a line there. You know, I'm cutting out the tree bark bit. Doesn't matter. No, well, that doesn't matter. It's your work. So you're going to do it your way. But this is just so I can say, yes, that is tree bark. Now, as before, as I've done this before. I'm going to tack through here. Okay. Tack right the way through there. And then I'm going to remove it. So I'm going to do that now and I'll get back to you shortly.
I started sewing along the line, started tacking. Now don't forget that tacking is intended to be pulled out so it doesn't have to be neat at all. Just nice stitches in and out. I've chosen a blue and I'm using the thread double and I'm following the line all the way along. Now you don't have to do this, you could just pencil your line on or you could do it freehand, make your own line up but this is just because it is from tree bark and this is to um, just show how to design from the tree bark but by all means you do it your way so we're going to make a knot at the back never worry about the back if the back's to be covered up it doesn't matter right now you need a nice sturdy knot there because the next bit we are going to tug the paper off now some of you will have done this um, before and I can't remember if we used it the last time or the time before but if you've been following this you'll know exactly what to do you very very carefully lift the paper up and this is why you need the thread double and knotted oh that's a tough old a tough old stitch there just pull that through because that was a bit loose there if you can see that but if you can see that the line is now has now been transferred onto the background fabric the exact line from the tree bark now what I didn't show you earlier on um, we are going to use the chain, fam uh, the chain family incorporated with some running stitch this one this piece here is all slow stitch um, slow stitch on quite a nice background woven background now it's all running stitch now if you can see it's quite a flat texture the thread I have some string there the thread is actually stra scraps or strips of fabric made into yarn it's about half an inch strips of fabric half an inch threaded threaded in our great big darning needles wherever they are and used as used as sewing thread but I don't think the texture is as nice as it is for the chain it's worked depending on what we want to do with it um, it could make a nice pocket on something it could be the front of a bag or a book a short project um, it could for the dress designers could actually be part of a sleeve oh it could do as well yeah I like that even the front of perhaps um, one side of a waistcoat part of a waistcoat so there's a lot of things you can do with it so this is the effect in just slow stitch and that is from a tree as well all the way around and you can see the lines are related so all you need is one line and you keep following it round if you see the string there that is actually a chain stitch yeah that's a twisted chain that I've popped in there can't see running stitch um, yeah that's all running stitch for the contrast to provide the texture I have used look embroidery thread like here you can see embroidery thread here and here mixed in with the thickness of the string and the thickness of the other strips of fabric it's okay it's not my favorite I don't like it as much as I do the the other example but this is what you can do so you don't have to use the chain stitch firmly we're going to incorporate them both anyway we're going to incorporate running and chain but if you don't want to do the chain you can just stick to the running stitch don't forget thicknesses thick thin long stitches against short stitches so it's up to you I'm just going to set that aside right now so here we have back to this here we have our a line there from tree bark so it's already taken shape what I will do I'm just going to run through a few stitches for you 
for those of you who do what colour for those of you who do want to use chain and you might not have done it before here we go now I'm using this thick I will be using it four strands of wool lovely big darning needle great big eye blunt end blunt end makes it easier to go through the hessian and the hessian is so loose and open the weave that it will take the four strands easy but I'm using it just to demonstrate how we're going to do the chain stitch so and it makes it nice if I was to show you if I were to show you this in an ordinary sewing needle and thread you you wouldn't see it now I'm just going to see if I can make that bigger where's my controls gone oh it's a fractionally bigger right so the needle comes from the back a nice knot in the back with the thumb hold the, the fabric down like so take the needle back into the same hole if you have problems with that bring it out at the side but ideally into the same hole just move that out of the way bring the needle out according to how long you want your, your stitch so bring it out there pull it through and there is your first chain you see that lovely big chunky chain of course it'd be much much uh, finer and smaller with embroidery floss so you just repeat this again into the same hole thumb holding down the thread there bring it the needle out according to how long you want your stitch and that is chain stitch okay there you go and if you wanted to finish there all you would do is take your needle underneath like that and pull it through and there you go chain stitch now the next one is twisted chain so needle in from the back like so there we go I will make sure that I'm on that's it on the camera right so chain stitch and work it down you bring the needle out this side okay your thumb is holding holding the thread down the needle come you put the needle slightly lower and on the right left then bring the needle that way you're slanting the needle now you see that so thumb is holding the thread down the needle is now slightly lower than where it went in slightly lower and it's slanted so thumb still holding this down pull it through and you can see the thread look twisting and there you have it so we're going to do another one repeat that needle slightly down can you see it came out from there so we're going to put the needle slightly down there once again you're going to slant it where you want how, how long you want the stitch and pull it through oh, I knew that was going to happen there and that is twisted chain oh get off here get off here to finish it just like we did the first one thread here and pull it through now the next one open chain or ladder stitch I think it's also called square stitch as well and this is a lovely stitch to do uh, that's it right so thumb again this thumb is really useful for this stitch thumb again holding it down bring the needle at a distance depending on how wide you want the stitch so bring the needle there because we're going to have a really nice big stitch here I'll move that down so you can see it thumb still holding the thread down pull that 
like that. Now the needle this time comes out underneath where you went in. Now depends on how long you want the stitch. So it's coming out there underneath here. So we went in there, then it's going to come out underneath. I think I'm a bit skew whiffy there. There. So we're going to pull it. Now hold that thread down with your thumb and then go back in here underneath this side underneath that side there like that can you see that now you have a chain but it's an open chain You're going to slant the needle over and underneath here so over and underneath there nice slant you see that slant there and pull it like that hear the old cuckoo clock again and pull that and then you bring it just like you did here underneath there I'm doing this sort of sideways it's quite difficult to do and there you have it okay and this is how you just keep doing your chain stitch um, your open stitch now these are the three stitches we're going to use you see how that does actually look like a ladder making of a ladder there these are the three stitches we're going to start with you already know the running stitches so I'm going to just sit that out the way for a little while we're going to start here and I'm going to start, I've already threaded up some needles, so where are they? Oh, where they are, amongst all the junk on the chair. Right, so I'm going to start with, can you see the lemon? I've decided that I'm only going to use four colours. So let's start with, I'm going to start with the lemon. And I'm, I'm using white, brown, orange and lemon wool. They're the only colours I'm going to use. I'm going to start with a, a twisted chain. I'm going to follow this down now. I'll have to sit round a bit. Twisted chain. So pull them taut. Thumb down. Following this line. The tree bark line and off we go nice and chunky this is going to be nice and chunky and it grows so quickly as well and I'm following the tacking there we go down again slanted lovely chunky stitch follow the chain oh, sorry follow the tacking Oh, someone's having fun out there. Weather has really changed. My son and I sat in the front garden. It's a communal garden. We sat out there the other day, or two days ago, and we got sunburnt. Today, on our hourly walk, friend and I um, got really cold. Well, I did, coming back. Right. There we go. And that is the first. Now I'm actually going to curve that a bit because that's too straight for my liking. Now don't forget your work. The design inspiration was the tree bark, but you don't have to stick to that. You can exaggerate or eliminate pieces. I don't want that looking like a J, so I'm going to bring one stitch round here whoa look at that oh no my goodness i don't know if i'm going to have enough thread uh, through yes and i'm going to just finish it off there and take uh, what i will do I, I will actually knot that 
and I might do that so as not to make the back too bulky I might actually over sew that with a little bit of cotton the blue cotton and I'm going to over sew that end because it's too small and I don't want it coming out on the front so all I'm going to do there um, if you can see that I'm just going to over sew that over sew it just over and under and that will hold it in place because it is short and there's a chance it just might wriggle free while I'm sewing the front and, um, and then that causes all sorts of problems there we go that should stay in place now not very neat but it doesn't matter who's going to see it doesn't matter so there we go so that is the first line I've caught up the tacking in the back so it doesn't matter because that's coming out anyway there it is you can leave the tacking in if it doesn't show but that is showing in the front and it will disturb me there we are now as you can see or not see there is a little bit of tug here on the fabric now you can do this in a frame if you prefer to work in a frame then by all means work in a frame I'm not working this in a frame I did the, the example in a frame funnily enough I'm not doing this in a frame so be careful not to tug or pull your thread too tightly otherwise you will get a bunching up wouldn't be the end of the world because you can damp press this and you can stretch it later but um, if you can sort of try not to pull it too tightly then that will be better still now I'm going to carry on with this and I'm going to use the stitches that I've just shown you the the chain the open chain and the twisted so I'll get back to you as soon as I've I've done several rows okay so just bear with me for a while and here is the finished piece well not totally finished but I finished using the wool at this stage I've actually used string as well if you can see along here this down there two rows of chain stitch in garden twine in this it gives a really lovely effect and it goes through a large um, large eye dining needle really well so I've used two rows there of chain stitch a row there and there here and here and the same there and I just think that marries it all together it joins it together lovely uh, I'm very tempted to put some more maybe here but or around there but I have to be careful of not overdoing it uh, at the moment I'm quite pleased with how it looks if I move it down slightly th there's the top I think it's got quite a nice finish at the top and there's the bottom now this bit here as you can see is buckling that bit there is buckling as is this piece here now it really doesn't matter because as soon as I finished it will be stretched it's going to be damp stretch and if you can see that's how it will be stretched it will be pulled from the corners and here perhaps if I turn it around that way you will see it it will be pulled this way and that way and it will be damp stretch so don't worry if your work takes on this buckling effect now my next step is to fill in some of these areas with the same stitches the same what was it four stitches did we say no three stitches running stitch as you can see I've, I've incorporated the running stitch as well the slow stitch round here in brown and lemon so that's what four stitches uh, I haven't strayed from the four stitches at all and I'm now going to start filling in some of these areas here and here maybe not all of them maybe a few here um, with 
the same stitches but using a finer thread and that will give us the contrast for the the texture it's lovely and textured at the moment but we just add a little bit more texture by using the fine thread with the thick thread I'm going to stick to these colors as well I have them here a few colors there where are we there and some lemon and uh, we'll see what what I come up with so I'm going off to do that now there's no need for you to watch me do this it's all pretty straightforward so I'll get off but what I didn't say I don't believe I measured this in the beginning the hessian background is actually 12 inches by eight and a half okay so I'm going off now and um, I should carry on and get back to you as soon as I've done that and here's the finished piece so what I did I've added the sewing floss or the embroidery floss here and I've used it six skeins I didn't strand it so I put the open um, chain stitch there I love open chain stitch there's some brown here ordinary chain stitch more open chain stitch there and here there's a mixture of uh, closed and open some running stitch along here I hope that's coming out because that let me move that up a tiny bit running stitch along here and here and up here now I'm just going to turn it sideways if you see that is the original line just before I turn it that is our original line I'm going to turn it very slowly that's it and then I can get the whole lot in so that's the side side of it let me move it in I've moved the camera so so excuse me <laughs> there and if I move it back that's it there we go now as you can see this is buckled it's quite badly buckled as well so it will need to be stretched so what I'm going to do is show you how to stretch your embroidery now several ways of doing this and you can actually buy super duper expensive stretching frames and stretching wooden bits and stretching this and that and you really don't need it um, I sometimes stretch a small embroidery under the chair under a dining chair nobody can see it nobody knows it's there but me and now everybody but you don't need that so I'm going to stretch this on this box box standard box from Amazon only arrived today with my pickle gherkins in them <gasps> so first thing first we're just going to wet this just damp that down now if you are using a box with perhaps print on it or something with print on it in fact you would just pop a piece of paper over it like that now I'm going to do that anyway oh look how pretty that is goodness all those journal makers of which I'm one oh we need to remember that right so we're going to wet that and the idea is that will seep into the back the back of the hessian like this also now going to wet our embroidery on the front like this and I put some special pins there well they're not actually special now if you're doing this on wood or under your chair or somewhere where nobody's going to see it behind the kitchen door is another good idea I can't use any of those because I can't find my drawing pins or my thumbtacks um, but if you have thumbtacks and a piece of wood your chair it stretches it lovely but I'm going to do this and um, because the strength there isn't that much strength in these these dressmaking pins actually shirt and bridal pins I haven't used them before so they're a bit of an unknown quantity right let me see how to undo that 
right now I'm hoping they look strong oh look at that I've not used them before and there's some bent ones in there that is not very good right so we're going to start up here right through the cardboard now this was quite a large box and I've managed to fold it one two three four times so there's four folds there of card stretch that slightly now we just want to put the corners pin the corners first there so that's three and that pin's bent as I've popped it in there now this is the last one that I'm doing here um, let me just turn, see if I can turn that round a bit no I'm just going to pull this down here you hear that go through lovely right so that's the four corners now in between very carefully because this isn't wood and drawing pins so the cardboard won't be as strong as a wooden base but it will do now you start pulling it into shape now if you can see or not already the grain is being pulled into shape and you can see that because of the lines of hessian are now straight they're straightening up so there we go and then we're going to go up to this top and do exactly the same and this bit is buckling badly so I'm really going to soak that and all this is it had um, some sort of kitchen cleaner in it and I've given it a thorough uh, wash well I've been using it a long time now but at the time I gave it a thorough clean and they're so handy because to buy those I mean you're looking at what a pound and not as strong as that and that would be the cheapest one I had bought one for three pounds some time ago in the local garden center and i only bought it because i was desperate but goodness three pounds that's a little bit of a rip off right so we need to get rid of this buckle in here so we're going to pull it out pin it this side now we're going to pin it this side and this is all we're going to do all the way round is just pull it out actually pulling it into shape and that needs to be pulled as well but let's just do it side one side to side it's looking better already this side now and then over to this side and actually by putting that paper just an ordinary sheet of A4 I can run the edge, edge, edge to edge, edge of the fabric against the edge of that paper and that way I know that's straight so over here which is just out of camera shot oh there we are just out of here now this will take some time to dry possibly overnight so um and let it dry naturally so don't be tempted to use your, your electric dryer on it if you have those the small dryers that dry paint and glue like small um, hair dryers don't use one of those let this dry naturally because that's the time it needs to stretch the fibers again there now I think that is looking maybe one more up there Let's hit something tough there. Oh, I 
thought I turned that off. Right, there we go. Now I'm going to leave that. Goodbye. Just going to give it a bit more soaking, pull it out there. And there we go. You can do this with all sorts of embroidery. But just be careful if you do it with something that you've worked on, say a piece of cross stitch or something with embroidery, using embroidery skeins or floss, that the skeins that you've used, the threads you've used are colour fast. Because you know what will happen if you do this and you've um, your threads aren't colour fast, the colours will run, especially the red and the black, they will run. So be very, very careful when you do this and, you know, be careful about what sort of threads and fibres, even backgrounds that you're using. Right, so that's that. I'm going to leave that now overnight and then tomorrow we'll get back and we'll see what's happened. Might put a few more pins in there actually. But so, now that is the finished embroidery finished tree bark stretching and there we go so I'll get back to you as soon as this has dried so this is what it looks like after drying I'm just going to take all the pins out and yeah it's actually staying in place so it isn't springing back which is a good sign, which means it's um it has been stretched. So if you notice as the pins are coming out, it's just lying flat. Now if it hadn't worked, the fabric would have just sprung back to how it was before we started stretching. It's been drying overnight, so it's um good what ten hours I imagine. And that is looking good now the demonstration piece the example had French knots on the surface well I'm not going to put French knots on this I'm going to put beads instead right let's just put those out of the way sit that there and here we have the finished piece and as you can see it's quite flat lovely and flat the buckling has gone from there and from there and it's it's just lovely it's just lovely so what I will do I'm going to use beads instead of French knots so I'm going to very very carefully and really I should have done this before I stretched it but I didn't realize I was going to use beads so some of these smaller areas if you can see there's like a small area there maybe a small area there down here I'm just going to put a few beads in just to add a little more um, a bit of dimension and a little bit more texture right I'm going to start here so this is ordinary polyester sewing thread used it double and a knot in the end. The needle isn't a beading needle. It's just probably an inch, maybe just over an inch uh, long. It's very, very narrow. It's, oh, I can't see that. It's as narrow as a beading needle, as fine, but it isn't as long. So I thought, well, while I have this on my pin cushion, it will save me looking through the drawer for a beading needle so nice knot in the back now i'm going to over sew that just to lock there just to lock the thread to make sure that won't pull through and where are the beads the beads i'm going to use the beads just as they they come out with no special consideration about color or size so pick the bead up 
there is a way of doing this by putting maybe five or six on on the needle but just for the time being let's just do it this way so that's the first bead and obviously you're just going to go through the hole I'll try a blue one through the hole through the fabric now I think beads look nice as uh, same with French knots really I like them close together the demonstration piece I, I was never happy with the way the French knots were placed on that they were too they were spaced out too much too far apart and I think French knots and beads need to be together mind you there, there is a, um, um, a time for having them in rows evenly spaced if you like perhaps if you're after a waterfall effect well at the moment in this particular small area I'm not after that I just want to group them now I'm going to carry on with this and because the fabric's already been stretched I'm trying very hard not to pull the thread too tightly um, otherwise we're going to start buckling scrunching up the background fabric again so very very gentle with this this is what I shall be doing for the foreseeable future and when I get back to you the beads will be in place and I think at that point I'll be calling this little example finished so I'm going to carry on now and I'll get back to you and I'll just show you can you see the few beads there just there and I'll show you this when it's all done here's the finished piece I've added the beads along here some along there here can see the red ones quite clearly actually on the screen there and I've grouped some there and also some there I don't think it needs anything else um, I think I'm going to call that that finished now the stitching is all finished what I'm going to do now I'm going to turn it around just so you can see what I am actually going to do that's better I'm going to put a frame on it and I'm going to line it as well, put a backing on it. Now I've already cut out these pieces of fabric here and they are three inches, three inches wide by as long as your fabric. Now this is quite a nice fabric and that's the front and that's the back. Now I actually like the back but I think it might be too much on this hessian background so i'm going to use the right way now i've cut out two to the same length and they're both the length or the width i should say of this of the edges the top and the bottom so right side of the fabric to right side of the stitching and i'm going to pin them pin these in place just a couple now once again it's always up to you whether you want to tack them if you're feeling a bit oh you know I haven't done much of this before then by all means tack them it doesn't matter I won't be tacking them I like my pins this way head head inwards because then the sewing machine will go right across the nice skinny bits of the pin and won't catch on the heads but if you haven't got a sewing machine you can do a couple of rows of running stitch along there very small running stitch or some back stitch so that is one one end and i'm going to do the same to this end just pin them and then I shall machine sew them right now I should turn the camera off while I use the machine because it might shake the table 
and it'd be a bit of a noise so as soon as I've done that I'll put the camera back on we're going to do exactly the same with the two two long sides now so the top and the bottom have been sewn down now we're going to do the same here right sides together there and right sides together there and you see these are the longer lengths so the longer lengths go across the bits that we've the pieces that we've just sewn down so that now goes there and that goes there I'm going to do exactly the same I'm going to pin them I'll pin right the way down each one and then I'll machine sew them so once again I'll go off and do this so here we have the four sides which are going to make up the frame four sides now firmly machine sewn down and pressed it's pressed on the it's pressed on this side here so it's lying perfectly flat now we need to put some hooks or some ties or something of your choice you can do whatever you like up here but this is what i'm doing um so i will give you the instructions to this i'm going to have some tabs at the top this is the top i'm going to put four tabs along here so i can hang it um and well i'm actually going to hang it from a piece of twig so my tabs are going there it was a toss-up whether to use the same colour or hessian as the background or the fabric of the frame. Um, I really couldn't make my mind up and perhaps I still can't to a certain extent. But there was something about the tabs in that, um, the same fabric that... Um, I'm not sure I'm really not sure about that I thought it might have been too much so I thought to break up that because this this fabric is beautiful but I don't really want it to be the focal point of the piece of work so I'm going to stick with these tabs now these are let me have a look where's the tape measure these tabs are one and a half inches so that's what about three and a half four centimeters so one and a half inches four centimeters by approximately six inches which is say 15 and a half centimeters I've uh, press them folded them in half I press them ready to sew down now the nice thing about this fabric as you know it frays so it's up to you what sort of edge you have along there I'm keeping mine frayed because I like that that edge so that suits me but you might not like that and if you don't then you would need to make two out of your chosen fabric two for one tab then you put right sides together and sew right the way round turn them into the right side and you'd end up like this you'd end up with a tab but it will be it'll have the fabric inside as well as on the outside so I need to place these so we're going to put them there now edge edges to edge you don't want them like that I mean you want them like this when it's finished but not at the moment so that's going to go there edge there one there one here so that's the two edges I'm just going to move that in by about half an inch from the edge because we will be machine sewing down here so this will make the seam allowance so move that in and just in case that wasn't on the screen I've moved it in about half an inch here that will be the seam allowance 
the same allowance here for sewing down this side so if that is on the edge it's going to encroach into the seam allowance so when I sew along the seam allowance I'm going to sew right up there so to avoid that we need to push it over about half an inch clear the seam allowance so that's that side and that side done the same seam allowance is now clear then these will go here evenly spaced there that looks I'm just going to eyeball that I thought I wouldn't use that term eyeballed because I don't like it um, and it's one of those sort of trendy tight words at the moment and I don't like that I have just used it oh my goodness shame on me shame on me that's what I get for criticizing isn't it so I'm going to use it again now I've eyeballed that and it looks as if those are practical goodness I was going to say practically even right so that's two two so hopefully that one will be two as well that's just over two so I'm going to move that over a bit that's oh lovely I mean it wouldn't matter would it if it wasn't equal even right now I've chosen some backing fabric and this is what I've chosen now why I've chosen this I mean it, unfortunately it won't be seen because it's rather lovely isn't it it's heavy it's a heavy fabric in fact um, I don't know how many layers there are there one I think it's just two two layers but it's thick and it's heavy which will give this just a little bit of weight when it's hanging I mean another way of doing this is choose a lighter fabric and put weights weights in the bottom along here just a couple like curtain weights or a couple of pennies that, that sort of thing now we need to leave a little bit of this open to pull it into the right way now we don't want to leave this open because we that would weaken these obviously so we want a nice clean seam along there so that's to be pinned and sewn so down there along there and along there uh, oh that's a blunt old needle it that pin it's surprising how these pins blunt I mean they're only going through fabric and obviously through cardboard um but yeah they go through cardboard rarely very rarely but it's surprising how they blunt so i'm going to pin down these sides here as well and i think i'm going to leave just a little bit of an opening at the bottom so i will sew down across here and leave a middle bit open now I want to come down here and sew and along there and the same on this this side that you can't see because then that gives a nice sharp corner if, if we were just to sew along to the end on either side this side as well and then turn it in it means we haven't got a nice sharp corner and we would have to make that ourselves by hand so in here so I'll be leaving a little opening here maybe three let's have yeah possibly three inches should be enough to pull this through well that looks it that looks like a nice size actually I bet that's about four. Oh, it's five I've left five inches open here to what for when I turn it and pull it through so what I'm going to do now I'm going to go and sew all the way round till I get back here okay so I'll be with you in a minute 
unfortunately the camera managed to switch itself off during finishing this and so there's no film to show you um, what it was like after our machine sewed all the way around but those of you who made the, the cushion or who saw the crazy patchwork cushion that um, we did will know how to do this because it's very similar main thing to do before you pull it into the right way through that hole that we left is to snip the the um, corners without breaking the stitches just snip across just so you take some of that bulk away and it was very much needed on this because of the thick background so this is the this is um the top and the tabs that one keeps curling in might have to look at that so there are the tabs and there's the bottom and that is the back so the back's quite nice as well I will give it a press but that is it finished so it only needs to have the twig popped in and this is how I'm going to display this one with a twig which carries the tree theme right the way along so I will hang it on the wall and I should take a picture and include the photograph at the end of this so I hope you enjoyed that um, I really enjoyed doing this it was great fun do have a go it's very easy to do and it's very quick as well and you don't have to go and buy um, new anything new really because you'll have all these pieces in your work bag or your bit bag you'll have a lot of bits and pieces even if you have to join the border or let you don't might not even have to have a border if you don't want one so it's all bits and pieces there is nothing there no odds and ends of beads from a, a bead jar as I say nothing new you've seen this background before from an old sack so don't forget that I have dyed this in turmeric so it's quite easy and of course the stick definitely free so there we are if you like this could you please like it with your thumbs up um, subscribe as well and then you'll you'll know when the next videos are coming out but above all take care um, do be careful out there and do still socially distance I think the saying is and uh, look after yourselves and until next time which will be sooner than you imagine um, I look forward to seeing you again very very soon so goodbye